My question today is about Lex Luger. As you very well know, leading up to SummerSlam 1993, WWE was giving him a massively huge push and switching him from the antagonistic narcissist to Captain America. Nobody gave a shit. This is one example off the top of my head, but it seems like even if he was at the top, he wasn't there for very long because people continued to not give a shit. In your opinion, why has Lex Luger, Luger not been able to get over? Luver, um, yeah, well, you know, no, I, we, I we, we've wanna, discussed this, so <laughs> I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to bury. I like package. Uh, Lex is a great guy, and and I don't want to bury him. Um, he was always nice to me, even when he was uh, on top of the world and the big star. Um, and and uh, I think Lex's problem was it was a combination of an early backlash to the people could tell that this guy was getting pushed. Uh, before he was ready, they put him in the horseman and then he was always getting shoved into the limelight because of the way he looked and he developed toward the end in WCW into pretty good performing heel in the ring because that was more, um, it, it was more natural for him because Lex never made an emotional connection with the fans. He, he, let I me mean, look at him. He'd always excelled in everything. He had like a fucking 4.0 grade average. He looked like that. And he just kind of had a habit of looking down his nose at people a little bit. And he, he his promos uh, didn't seem genuine to people, even when he was trying to be nice to them. Uh, or sometimes when he was trying to be a heel. He just, I don't think he was comfortable in, in the, you know, in the years that he, the, he got those pushes. And then later on, he might have been, but by then, first impressions. So... He certainly had some interesting, what I would call, I guess, early matches. The CWF stuff from like 1986. Yes, folks, I've actually seen some of this stuff. Oh, yeah. And it was kind of interesting to see him in that other context <laughs> because he wasn't necessarily being treated as, you know, any of the things that I guess he was at WCW or WWE. And he could kind of go a bit um, well, and, and the, wrestle the, a bit. The problem was there's the Florida Territory that had seen every great – technical wrestler and brawler and top NWA star because it was owned by Eddie Graham and it's a year after Graham dies and they find this big bodybuilder and he's green as grass but he looks great and I think it, it, people probably went no nah, we've seen a lot better than this because he just started right and and then of course you know Crockett saw him and oh my god the next Hulk Hogan and he'd been working a year and he's in the horseman and it just you know uh, it it I don't think he ever had time. I don't know if he ever would have uh, blossomed if he'd had to pay his dues because I don't know if he loved the business enough where he would have gone to a couple territories and made 300 bucks a week for a couple of years. I don't know that he would have done that. That was the impression that I've gotten from actually hearing some of your shoot interviews talking about him. It, it seems like he, his passions lied, else, lied elsewhere, I guess, in the uh, sport, football. Well, but he had played football, but he wasn't playing football then, which meant he kind of, you know, probably should have dedicated himself more to wrestling. But I, 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 he never was a wrestling fan. So he, I don't know that, that Lex ever got to the reason why that all these guys loved it and grew up in the business, second generation, whatever. Or just if, uh, He and, and Flair had two different mindsets concerning the wrestling business, I think. 